Good morning. Strike one. Good morning. There we go. Please be seated. My name is Rob Brown, and I'm honored to serve as the principal of Grandview Heights High School. On behalf of the Grandview Heights Board of Education, Superintendent Andy Culp, and the faculty, staff, and students of Grandview Heights High School, it is my honor and privilege to welcome you all to our 106th commencement ceremony. Today we get to celebrate 85 seniors who are about to go into the world and do some amazing things. You know, for, for a couple of months now, I, ever since I realized we were able to do this, I, I worried about heat and rain and wind. Not, not for a second that I think it'd be too cold. <laughs> that, that was a surprise. Before we move forward in today's ceremony, I would like to take a moment to thank some very important people who supported our students and the development of this ceremony along the way. Our senior class advisor, Mr. Kevin Richards, who has spent countless hours this year making sure our seniors not only have everything they need, but did so in a way that honored traditions and kept the focus on students, even during these unprecedented times. I would also like to take a moment to recognize our commencement speaker, Mr. Dante Wood Spikes, who reminds me a lot of this senior class because he is a great example of perseverance, passion, resiliency, and he shows through actions how one person can change the world for the better. We are honored and grateful he agreed to speak with us today. And of course, a very special recognition and thank you to the families of our amazing seniors. Because of your support and sacrifice, we have the privilege of providing amazing educational opportunities to students who are passionate, genuine, and hardworking. Speaking of support and sacrifice, I'd like to mention the truly special K-12 faculty and staff of Grandview Heights School District. They work tirelessly to ensure students have everything they need to be successful, and I couldn't be prouder to work with a staff who truly cares about kids. As noted in your program, we have 47 students who will be awarded an honors diploma and 40 who have been inducted into the National Honor Society. I would now like all of those students graduating with honors or who are in the National Honor Society to please stand and be recognized. <laughs> As we take a moment to celebrate achievement, it is clear the class of 2021 has much to celebrate. Academically, 43 students will graduate with a GPA of 4.0 or higher. We are graduating two National Merit Commended Scholars. And this year, graduates will be attending college as far north as Scotland, as far south as Australia, as far east as Massachusetts, and as far west as California. In addition, our accepted scholarship offers currently total $2,918,693. That's a lot of money. We are equally proud of our students who have built their skills and capabilities to the point where they are ready to graduate to the workforce, military, and or special training immediately. In addition to academics, the class of 2021 had a lot to be proud of athletically. Competing in the Mid-State League, boys bowling and boys track and field won MSL Ohio titles. In cross country, the girls team qualified for the state meet. Derek Amicom placed third at states and was named the MSL Ohio Cross Country Runner of the Year. In soccer, Taylor Pierce was on the Super 12 team, and our boys soccer team won the Central District. Our boys basketball team was the Central District winner, and in girls basketball, Hannah Yoakum scored over 1,000 points in her high school career and received 12 varsity letters, which is quite rare. We were the Central District winners in boys track and field, and Matthew Taylor was a field event MVP for the MSL Ohio Division. As impressive as all this sounds, it was our students, the way they represented themselves, our school, our district, and our community that was truly impressive. Their character and leadership was every bit as inspiring as their athletic statistics. They supported underclassmen, and on multiple occasions this year I received notification of individual students who received sportsmanship nomination, which is usually submitted by game officials. During their four-year involvement in the performing arts, the vocal music members of the class of 2021 successfully and consistently demonstrated outstanding efforts during many performances and OMEA competitions. This unusual year was no exception, and they adapted and persevered through the strangest of rehearsals conditions, which included singing six feet apart, 
singing with masks, and having to submit solo recordings for virtual performances. They contributed the success virtually of the performance of Clue on stage, and live recorded and streamed performances of You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, and over a year and a half of not having performed, they safely and successfully returned to live performing with a fulfilling spring concert on May 13th, which was quite amazing. Their enthusiasm, dedication, and talent has left a lasting impact on our performing arts department, and they will be missed by everyone. Th this time of year, I'm often asked questions similar to, when, when you think of the class of 2021, wh what comes to mind? Now, I'm nearing the end of my speech, and I have not mentioned COVID once, which is on purpose, because that is not what this class will be known for. This class will be remembered for, for, for your achievements, for what you do moving forward, for your character, and for the resiliency you showed during a very difficult final 15 months of your K-12 education. I think about your empathy, your passion to make the world a better place, your creative ideas, and, and honestly, when, when I'm asked what I think of the class of 2021, the first thing that comes to mind, the very first thing that comes to mind is that I'll miss them. I'm, I'm gonna miss this class. Seniors, as you begin your journey beyond Grandview Heights, keep doing what you do best, and that is taking care of one another. At this time, I'd like to welcome Ms. Bryn Obringer to the stage, who is our senior class vice president. Good morning. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the members of the Grandview Heights Schools Board of Education. Mrs. Emily Gephardt, Mr. Kevin Gousset, Ms. Molly Wasmuth, Vice President Mr. Eric Bodie, and President Mr. Jesse Truitt. I would also like to introduce our Chief Academic Advisor, Dr. Jamie Lusher. <laughs> Finally, I would now like to introduce the Superintendent of the Grandview Heights Schools, Mr. Andy Culp. Good afternoon. It's so great to be physically present and celebrating these very deserving 2021 graduates. On behalf of Grandview Heights Schools Board of Education and our entire district staff, I welcome each of you to the 106th commencement ceremony. It has been a distinct honor and privilege to serve the past seven years as your superintendent. I could not be more proud of each and every one of you, and I know that your future is exceedingly bright. Graduates, this is your moment. It is the reward for your hard work and enthusiasm that you have invested in your education over the last 13 years. Your individual and collective achievements give great meaning to our work as educators here at Grandview Heights Schools. I wanna thank all of our educators, staff members and coaches who have provided you with so many phenomenal experiences both inside and outside of the classroom, on the playing fields, on the courts, on the performing arts stage, and in serving our community more broadly. Whether you realize it or not now, each and every one of these experiences has had a significant impact on you in some way. I know also as a parent, of a graduate of the class of 2021 this year, myself, that this is a very, very special moment for all of the parents who have supported our graduates along their journey. All at once, we feel excited, it's a little surreal, can be a little emotional, and we are also proud and perhaps just a little bit sad. Graduates, you are joining a tradition of excellence that began with our first Grandview Heights High School graduating class in 1915. The Grandview Heights Board of Education believes that your diploma is a symbol that signifies academic excellence and personal achievement of the highest order. Because we believe in you, and quite frankly need you to sustain our future, a significant amount of resources have been invested in each of you. However, your parents have invested even more. Take the time, graduates, to express to your parents, grandparents, and other family members the gratitude you feel from their support. 
Physician and poet Oliver Wendell Holmes said, what lies behind us and what lies ahead of us are insignificant compared to what lies within us. These days of tremendous change in the world and our ability to manage these changes, be adaptive, flexible, and create new structures and systems closely correlates to our levels of knowledge and education and ultimately our, your success. The importance and impact of your personal effort, what lies within you in reaching these milestones during this time is not underestimated. I recently came across an article by Jim Mahoney, a former superintendent in Ohio, and perhaps more locally known as one of the founders and long-serving directors of Battelle for Kids, a national or not-for-profit organization. The article that he wrote was entitled, Promote Positive Energy. In it, he starts, everyone brings happiness. Some by coming, others by leaving. In Jim Clifton and Jim Harder's book, It's the Manager, it is affirmed that the quality of the leadership is the single most important factor in organizational or team success. And the key to that leadership is the ability to create positive energy. Ken Blanchard describes energy as optimism, trust, enthusiasm, love, purpose, joy, passion, and spirit to live and perform at a higher level. Here are three simple ways for each of you to consider to create positive energy, no matter what the next chapter in your journey is. Number one, make work fun. In the early 90s during the summers, I worked as a landscaper and a mower for a company called Buckeye Landscaping. The days were hot and long. It was hard, dirty, gritty work. But it was often fun because the full-time workers delighted in horseplay to amuse themselves and others as they taught, laughed with, and encouraged the college workers like myself. I look forward, even on those miserably hot days, to their sense of humor, sage advice, and to the respect I earned from them by working hard to accomplish difficult tasks and to meet or sometimes exceed their expectations. It was during this time that I gained a true appreciation for hard work and learned firsthand the old adage, if you can't laugh at yourself, you leave the job to everyone else. Leaders need to create or call on culture champions to make their work environment, workplace, where people look forward to working, contributing, learning, laughing, and yes, and yes, having fun. Second, Look for strengths first. Leaders take time to learn and recognize the strengths of others. Have you ever lost track of time because you were so engaged in a project or an essay or playing a sport or running in a track meet? If you have, you probably were using your strengths without even knowing it. Strengths become talents when they are empowered and encouraged by others, thus leading us to do what we do naturally best. Leaders are able to identify those strengths and put people in place to succeed. When leaders acknowledge the strengths and talents of others and provide them opportunities for success, a pot positive energy results. Number three in the final practical application is sincerely appreciate others. William James, often referred to as the father of American psychology, posited that the deepest principle of human nature is the craving to be appreciated. Do people work harder for others who acknowledge their contributions and efforts? Seems so simple, and yet so many leaders pay little attention to something that creates incredible positive energy. Still, when it comes to praise, I've seen Far too many leaders celebrate thanksgiving instead of thanksgiving. They think it's about them. Usually, these are the ones who can't pat, you can't pat on the back because their hand is already there, already on their own back. 
The leader who wants to create positive energy writes notes, sends cards, and says thank you to team members. It doesn't have to be fancy. You just have to sincerely mean it. Studies have reinforced countless times that people will work for a good leader who appreciates them more than nearly anything else. My charge to each of you graduates is to create, inspire, share, and promote positive energy for those around you and most importantly for yourself, as it will serve all of you well both short and long term. Make work fun, look for strengths in others first, and sincerely appreciate others. The future is always uncertain and difficult to predict. What I can predict, however, is that each of you will face successes, challenges, and yes, even failures. Remember who you are and what you believe. Remember where you came from and what you stand for. Remember to be positive and try and spark positive energy in others and in yourself that you want in return. Each of you possesses a strong moral compass, and they all ring true. What lies within each of you will determine your successes. Believe in yourself and what you can and will do. And although I share this quote often, I am compelled to repeat it again by Maya Angelou. I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. Each of you in this graduating class have made so many feel valued, a part of something bigger than themselves. In victory and in defeat, this class has always conducted themselves with the utmost respect and integrity. In the classroom and out of the classroom, your leadership in academics, athletics, the arts, and service has established high expectations for the classes that will follow. Most importantly, you are all truly a terrific group of young women and young men. Each of you is polite, well-spoken, intellectually curious, caring, interested in helping others, and driven to do good in all areas of your life. I thank you for choosing to be the best that you can be. It is because of this great character of this class that I believe your future is promising and in turn because you have a commitment to help others. Our future is promising as well. Congratulations to the 106th graduating class of this great historic institution that is Grandview Heights Schools. I wish you all the very, very best. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kalt. At this time, I'm honored to introduce the first of our two student speakers. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Lindsay Bertani to the stage. Life is like a game of Foursquare. You never know when someone's going to call spuds on you. I think we all, young and old, can recall the cutthroat, ice cold, cheap shot game of Foursquare. Now, I don't know what everyone's version of the game consisted of. However, I can speak on behalf of our class that we were absolutely ruthless. Some could not handle the heated arguments, public humiliation, cherry bombs, and most of all, the times when the ball crashed straight to in our faces. But we all tried the game at one point or another. We all ventured to see what this obsession was all about. Yet whether you were an avid player at middle school recess, or tried once and then played whatever other boring game there was, I am convinced we have all been playing Foursquare for all these years, and today, I want to share with you the truths I've taken away from it. The first truth, you are going to fail. You have lived your life failing and will continue to do so. That's the game of Foursquare. In the midst of failure, optimism will still shine bright. Recess will start, the line will form, 
and excitement will buzz. You begin the game with true belief that today will be the day you make it to A-square. Today, everything will fall into place. But that's being idealistic. You make it into D-square and are shot with failure. You don't make it past that first square. Or maybe you do, and you manage to stay all the way up until B-square. Triumph is so close, your heart bounces up and down in feverish anticipation. All the players notice your steady advancement, however, and they, you become targeted. Just like that, you're in the back of the line. Just like that, you fail. The second truth. As the awfully wise Giuliana Bongiorno once said, not everyone is always going to be on your side. You will be right and no one will care. It starts with selfishness, a test in how willing you are to disregard everyone else in order to achieve personal success. In this case, if it's not you or your mother, it's an enemy. So when you smack the ball and it bounces on the line of A square, everyone is going to say it bounced outside of the line. Your closest friends will nod their heads at the accusation that you are gone out back of the line. Betrayal will blind you, mercy will evaporate, and you will be so completely furious that you have to clench your lips to avoid bursting out words of rage and silently stomp to the back of the line. You wait in line, alone and defeated. The third and final truth. The game you are playing is one of comparison. Foursquare requires talent, and we can't all be as skilled as Dylan. It's an art of precision, something that not every player will uphold. But it also requires observation. As a player, you notice who stands in the anxious line of runs and who enters the game confidently and consistently. Waiting in line, comparison rushes over you like a flood. You approach the arena, and in a span of less than 30 seconds, you drop your head and are ushered to the back because you get out just like that. Embarrassment crowds your head and anxiety towers over you as you get ready to be back in the game to feel that failure once again. Because comparison to Dylan is not going to get you anywhere close to that sweet, sweet A square. Comparison will make you feel so small and unworthy. So the whistle blows and the game presses pause until the next sunny day. Walking away to line up for cafeteria lunch, you mutually agree with yourself that you will never play Foursquare again. But when has getting through life ever been easy? Even the countless hours of studying, cramming the night before, or going in for extra help can end in you failing a test. Even running a sprint test, getting yelled at by the coach, or weight training with Kirk can end in you losing a district final. Even putting on a fake smile, cracking a funny joke, or having a group of friends can end in people not liking you. Even going into Foursquare with a mind of hope can end in you never getting past C-square. Even sniping someone out in A-square can end in you being the person out. Even participating in a game at recess can end in you being the one watching from the sidelines. Failures are inevitable. You are going to get corner cut every day in the most small, painful, unexpected ways. But each day I am learning that avoiding failure is impossibly difficult. So, looking past all the cold truths in life, all the ruthless games of Foursquare, I can see that the day is still sunny. The times we clumsily get out at Foursquare make the success of making it to C-square that much more valuable. Sure, Foursquare and failures they may not make us feel good, but the kind of player, the kind of person we are is revealed by how we react to the game. Isn't this what defines us? It is not the inevitable failures, for how could it be if we all experience them? 
Waiting in the back of the line matures us because we are forced upon the recognition of patience, perseverance, and determination. How we choose to react uniquely transforms our minds and identity, building upon the people we are and are going to become. So when you get tossed to the back of the line, what are you going to choose? When you fail a course, lose a district title, or mess up a friendship, what is your next step? In the face of failure, we can let it define us by subjecting ourselves to it. But we all have the choice to take defeat and take the ball in our hands and try again. Or even more, to step away from that rubber ball and journey to a whole new game. No matter what square you've been in or not been in, you must know that you have a choice a choice to be far more than a player caught between a painted white box of squares. You are so much more than what you have faced at GHHS. At the end of the day, as we hear the whistle blow and stand here or sit here graduating, the future gives us the choice to go and play a new game, to step outside the lines of Grandview and experience what it's like to not have spuds on spuds written in the rule book. Now is the time we can carry the reality of the hard truths I've shared with you all today and take them into the success of graduating onto a new game. Because setbacks do not define us. They set up our individuality to shine brighter than those dark truths. Thank you, class of 2021, for failing with me. Thank you for teaching me we are beyond more than a ruthless game of Foursquare. I cannot wait for us to successfully fail and succeed, of course, individually and beautifully into who we are, not just as players, but people. Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you, Lindsay. I'd now like to welcome our second speaker in no particular order, Miss Allison Smith. January 20th, 2006 a monumental day in American history for our generation. This was the release date of the very first high school musical movie. The world hasn't been the same since. For people like me without older siblings, this film series was our first glimpse into the exotic world of high school. But I think we can all attest to the fact that Hollywood, for the life of them, cannot seem to accurately portray a typical American high school. They seriously need to lower our expectations, at least within the dating realm. I know we are all expecting Zac Efron would be our first boyfriend. Am I wrong, Merritt? <laughs> so I give to you, class of 2021, two reasons in which high school was nothing like high school musical. For those of you who had a bleak childhood, and didn't immerse yourself in the culture that was High School Musical, I'm going to pity you and give you a quick rundown. Essentially, in the first movie, a jock named Troy and a scholar named Gabriella meet during winter break. It's a well-known fact that most people meet their soulmates while singing karaoke at a ski lodge. So it's really no surprise when Troy and Gabriella fall in love at first sight. Back at school, they secretly auditioned for the Spring Musical, more formally known as the Spring Musicale. <laughs> Things take a turn, however, when Troy lies, saying that the musical and Gabriella don't matter to him in an effort to get his friends off his back. Though it's uncertain if they were ever officially dating, it's pretty clearly broken up when Gabriella sings a tear-stricken song while it's fixated on a ceiling-to-floor-length poster of Troy. You know, the totally realistic type of posters all schools have their athletes. I mean, haven't you seen the ones of Taylor and Derek in the high school? Eventually, Troy and Gabriella get back together. This is a Disney movie, after all. 
and blow the audience away at their callback. I'd explain the next two movies, but there's really no need, since the same plot is recycled for the whole series. Yes, Troy and Gabriella break up in every movie, and yes, in every movie, they get back together. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The first and most tragic reason high school was nothing like High School Musical would be the lack of emphasis on the musical part. I could be wrong, but speaking from my own personal experience, I have yet to witness any spontaneous dancing or singing, though I admit Cece has come pretty close to it during marching band rehearsal. In movies, songs are an efficient means of revealing the deepest, innermost thoughts and feelings of a character. Most importantly, though, they allow us to sympathize with them because we can see the world from their point of view. I've come to learn, however, that like high school, life is not a musical. In reality, choosing when, where, and to whom you express your emotions to is a tedious and grueling game. It's as though you're trapped in the middle of a frozen lake, and each emotion you express is a brick. You have to make it back to shore, and you know your chances are better the less load you carry, because there are areas of the ice that are thin. You'll fall through. And there's no way to test if the ice is durable unless you put your weight on it. So you end up tiptoeing your way through high school. The few emotions you allow to penetrate your skin clutch tightly against your chest, just praying you don't fall through the ice. Unlike the students in High School Musical, expressing oneself isn't easy. We can't just spontaneously burst into song. We can't always make others understand the struggles we're facing. We can't always be heard. Unfortunately, we've become masters at repressing our true emotions. Repression is a skill, yes, but not one that should dominate your life. So I urge you all to not hide your heart. Find at least one person who can listen to your spontaneous singing. Don't be afraid to fall through the ice sometimes. You'll learn how to make your way back to the surface. The second way high school was nothing like High School Musical is the misunderstanding of cliche high school cliques. In High School Musical, there appears to be this unspoken rule that you can only have one interest, identify yourself with one persona, and surround yourself with only one group of people. When Troy and Gabriella challenge the boundaries of this by auditioning, more students come forward, admitting to having a more complex personality than the Society of East High had made room for. Suddenly, the jock declares a passion for baking. The nerd announces a desire to, quote, pop, lock, jam, and break. And the stoner confesses to playing the cello. In high school, it can feel almost mandatory to place yourself in a certain clique and abide by those perceptions. But as we will soon see, the world doesn't have rigid categories for us to blend into, which is both frightening and thrilling. You don't always have to sacrifice and choose. You can do both, have both, and be both. Don't let your passion for one thing define you. It doesn't matter whether your interests are aesthetically pleasing or not. Let them be disarrayed. Let yourself be a mystery few get to unravel. The people who love you won't care about the contradicting parts. They will accept the scatter of stars in the night sky that is you. Never limit yourself because you think you won't fit inside the world's pre-existing perception of you. Go through life as a work in progress, not a masterpiece. Now, I know I'm here to tell you why high school was nothing like High School Musical, but there is one thing the movie got right. As cheesy as it sounds, the saying, we're all in this together, has never hit so hard until this year. Not because of COVID, but simply because it's our senior year. It really doesn't matter whether or not you were close to every single person in our class. That's not what this quote is about. Nor does it mean you always had someone carrying you through the hard times, or someone skipping with you through the good times. It goes much deeper than that. It's simply the fact that when you look beside you, as I urge you all to do now, there was someone there. You might have made eye contact, shared a weary sigh, silently agreed on the fearfulness of the road ahead, and continued walking together. There's an unspoken connection between each and every person in our grade. This connection isn't something special, granted only to the class of 2021. Every class before us has had it, just as every class after us will have it. 
The only thing we can choose to do differently is acknowledge its presence, quietly and thoughtfully. We can choose to look at someone as though looking at them for the first time, without judgment, good or bad, and just see them as this human being who is there for the very beginning and who is here for the end. So next year, when you're feeling homesick or stressed or lonely or exhausted, please know you're not alone. If you can remember to look beside you, you'll find a beautiful human being who you've known since kindergarten, whispering, we're all in this together. And the two of you will take a step forward into the unknown, each glowing with gratitude for the other's mere existence. Congratulations, class of 2021. You've given me a home for the past 13 years, and now I give to you all the confidence in the world that you will all go through your lives as though you're starring in your very own musical. I can't wait to see what you all become. As we go our separate ways, I leave you with these words. We're soaring, we're flying. There's not a star in heaven we cannot reach if we're trying. So we're breaking free. One more round of applause for both of our speakers because they were incredible. I'd also like to point out that as high school seniors, they, they both speak better than both myself and Mr. Kolb, so <laughs> really impressive. Sorry, Mr. Kolb. At this time, I'd like to introduce Ms. Mia Marcellana, who is our senior class president and who will be introducing our speaker. Dante Wood Spikes is known for various forms of work, such as professional speaking, community work, and video documentation. For his work, he has been interviewed by various news sources, included on panels, and involved in a multitude of projects. Dante's overall goal is to educate and connect the world beyond perceptions and stereotypes with authentic experiences through storytelling and documentation. Dante is the epitome of resilience, perseverance, and a perfect example of how one person can change the world for the better. Dante met with senior class representatives before he wrote his speech in order to learn about us and make sure he would be able to truly capture the class of 2021 seniors' feelings towards Grandview Heights and their journey up to this point. Dante told us he was shocked when people offered him his first opportunities to speak, unsure as to what made him so special. After just one lunch in which he listened and laughed and spoke with us, we knew exactly what they saw in him in the first place because we saw it too. His incredible empathy, open-mindedness, and ability to listen made it abundantly clear that he was meant to be a public speaker and every one of us left that lunch so impressed and excited to hear him speak today at graduation. Dante uses his platform to listen, empathize, and give voices to the experiences he learns about, many of which belong to his own audience members. Again, what a great example of one person who can change the world. I have no doubt that his speech, despite not living or growing up in Grandview, will capture perfectly who we are as a class, who we are as people, and who we will become. Please welcome Dante Woodspikes. Uh, no pressure at all. <laughs> How y'all doing? That's good. That's real good. That's real good. Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, it's cold. I ain't going to take up too much of your time. I know people want to enjoy their time with their family and the students, so let's make sure we get through this. Um, so um, I want to start off by saying to all of the graduates, congratulations. And I'd like to say to all of the parents and guardians and caretakers, and the young adults that are graduating today that, uh, you know, with the pandemic, it's been very difficult. And um, I know it's been very scary. 
for a lot of us. Uh, from businesses closing to jobs letting people go to loved ones being in a hospital and not being able to visit them in sometimes their last moments, that's pretty painful. That kind of pain where the strongest of us find, find ourselves worried, scared, and in tears before going to bed, asking ourselves, what am I going to do? Despite the odds, you made it. All of the parents, all the people that watched over the graduates and made sure they made it to this point, you made it. And for that, I would like to say thank you. So all of the graduates, could you please join me in giving the parents and the family members a round of applause for all of their support. Um, and I owe every student, teacher, and parent an apology. I was convinced most of my life I had absolutely no reason to step foot in Grandview. <laughs> But here I am as your commencement speaker. <laughs> you know, uh, one of the reasons for me saying that is because society tells us to stay away from each other. If we don't dress alike, if we don't talk alike, if we don't enjoy the same activities and we don't go to the same places, society says we should stay away from each other. And a more practical reason for me saying that is because I've never been to Grandview. Uh, never went to the Grandview School, and I don't know anyone here. But uh, that's what I thought. Uh, how I became the commencement speaker was I received an email from one of the teachers sharing they were looking for somebody to speak. And as a speaker, I, I expect people to reach out to me, yeah. But I was a little bit curious how this opportunity came about and what made them choose me. Um, and I was on the phone with one of the teachers, and for the sake of privacy, I'm going to refer to this individual as Mike. Um, the teacher has said, you know, Mike has said, if you need somebody to speak, you have to get Dante Wood Spikes. This guy is good at getting a point across and bringing people all together when he speaks. I was very flattered to hear that, but I was still trying to figure out who is this person that knows who I am, but I have no idea who they are. I looked them up on social media and I had seen them and I still didn't know who they were. But I looked at my messages and recognized we had a very brief conversation in 2016. This is when I first started getting a lot of recognition and people started to see what I was doing. This person reached out to me and said, hey, Dante, if you need anything, let me know. I was supposed to send them an email, but I never followed up. You know, sometimes when you don't follow up, that can be a sign of disrespect. But this person remained watching my journey for the next five years and gave me the opportunity to be the commencement speaker here today. So I want that to be a lesson to you to make sure that you always do what it is you do best because people are watching. Everything you say you do is accounted for. So make sure you don't put crazy stuff on social media. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, um, you know, I say all this to you because um, it's a journey and you never know what's going to happen next. Um, so once I found out I was a speaker at the graduation and uh, I found out who this individual was, the next thing I had to do was find out what it is I'm going to say at this graduation. So um, I did what every senior does when they knew they had an assignment due tomorrow, but they didn't read the book the night before, I went to Google. <laughs> I Googled Grandview Heights. And one of the first things that popped up that I didn't even ask was, is Grandview Heights, Ohio safe? And the answer was, I kid you not, it's extremely safe, day and night, it's a very safe place. That's the voice I heard when I read it. And I thought to myself, now Grandview may be safe, but it can't be that safe. So I asked Google another question. I said, does Google ever lie? <laughs> and the response Google gives is, Google gives relevant results for the person searching. And I was like, what type of philosophical double reverse psychology crooked car salesman response is that? <laughs> Can you imagine Google being a car dealership? 
and you go to the car, you go to Google car dealership and say, hey, uh, Google, what's wrong with that car right there? And Google says, well, cars can't be wrong, can they? You, you go to the front, lift the hood up and say, Google, where's the engine in my car? Google says, well, all cars are cars, even without an engine. We are going to direct you to our frequently asked questions man that will not answer any of the questions that you have. You know, the problem with Google is it takes information from articles, blogs, TV shows, and someone's random Uncle Bob, Darth Vader, and a talking parrot, and it gives you their answers. Also, Google assumes the answer you want based off the past search that you did, not what you're looking for right now in the moment. And I realized when it comes to Grandview, I couldn't do that. The only true way for me to learn about Grandview Heights was to go to the source. I have to meet the students and hear what they have to say about their own environment. After we spoke, I found out if they felt they were safe or not. And I came to the conclusion safety is not exclusive to physical harm. The students spoke about the possibilities of experiencing emotional harm and psychological harm and spiritual harm. We talked about being in certain, we talked about not being certain what life would be like moving away from Grandview Heights, experiencing culture shock leaving Grandview Heights, and establishing a new identity outside of Grandview Heights. As I listened closely, I realized each person was pretty much saying the same exact thing. The person that I am, the person that I've become at Grandview Heights, can I take that person with me into the world that I'm about to become a part of? To all my graduates, I want you to listen to me closely. You have reached the finish line of one race and you're about to start a new one. The new race you involuntarily have to be a part of is called adulthood. Adulthood is the race that never ends and has a bunch of unexpected obstacles, obstacles that you have to find your way around. And believe me, you are going to get tired. But through the tiredness you'll experience, there is one thing that you must do. Become your own best friend. The best way to survive the world you're about to venture into is to love yourself enough to become your own best friend. New environments are scary, and unfortunately, there are people that will attempt to use that against you. Making new friends is hard. You'll cross paths with some people who care, and you'll cross paths with some people that have ill intentions. There is somebody or something that may break your heart like never before. It could be a relationship. It could be thinking that you're going to get this dream job, but it doesn't work out. Or it could be a comment that somebody says that just sticks with you all day. There will be days where you wake up and sit on the side of the bed and ask yourself, why is my life going this way? Am I worthy? I want to give up. I want to quit. And if you ever find yourself thinking these things, this is where becoming your own best friend counts the most. No, you don't become immune to any of the things I just talked about. But what you do is give yourself another chance every single time you think that race is over. When you become your own best friend, you won't get in your own way because you realize there's enough people in the world that will do that for you. You won't seek validation or permission to be your greatest self. You won't compare yourself to those around you and find reasons why you can't evolve. You won't spend time making the same mistake plenty of us as adults have made and if I am wrong, y'all have permission to correct me. One of the mistakes we made was searching for love, reasons, and acceptance in spaces that did nothing but leave us much more damaged and confused than we already were. You won't spend time searching for what's already inside of you. But for that to happen, you have to see your value. The unfair part of life is time doesn't stop when we need it to, which means we have to find ways to make our time meaningful. We have to make choices that count because at the end of the day, we have to face ourselves when no one else is around. So I'm here for you. Your families and friends are here for you. The teachers and staff behind me are here for you. But most importantly today, you are here for you. This is the first day of every day of your life. 
Grandview Heights Senior Class 2021, thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Wood Spikes. We are honored that you were here to speak with us today. Pardon me one second. On behalf of Board President, Mr. Jesse Truitt, and the entire Grandview Heights Board of Education, I would like to officially certify that the 85 members of the Class of 2021 have indeed met all graduation requirements as outlined by the Ohio Department of Education and are eligible to receive their high school diplomas. I thought you were all sure of that when you showed up, but some, some of you sounded surprised. I will now give our first diploma to Senior Class Secretary Josephine Cantelmo, who will be conferring diplomas. Maria Janie Marcellana. Why did I say the name? Bryn Marie Obringer. Carly Sunrise Orr. Derek Andrew Amacon. Adam Joseph Bechtel. Lindsay Nicole Bertani. Kieran Robert Murray Bodie. Juliana Carmela Bongiorno. Eliana Karen Bowen. Avery Carol Calhoun. John Oliver Clark. Brendan Kevin Cleary. Alandria Victoria Cobb. Jansen Nicholas Kraft. Christian Edward Crawford. Grant David Culbertson. Corey Dylan Culp. Ethan Kenworthy Dice. <laughs> Noah James Dimmick. <laughs> Jacob, 
Dylan Rain Dobbs Ewens. <laughs> Connor Kendrick Dobies. Thank you. <laughs> Isabella Ona Donahue. Gabrin Allen Downer. Adam Joseph Ellis. <laughs> Skylar Renee Everett. Layton James Willis Feast. Sean Ryan Flanagan. Mason Derek Gustazi. Leonardo Elliot Graham. John Weber Hurlhey. River Blue Hobbs. Kai Akira Isaka. Courtney Nicole Jaggers. Caroline Hayward Kale. Mary Elizabeth Kale. Finley Kerr. <laughs> Stephanie Ann Kramer. <laughs> Catherine Irene Kakura. Blaine Thomas Lee. <laughs> Margaret Elva Lovely. <laughs> Brady Scott Long. <laughs> Margaret Elizabeth Lyon. <laughs> Amelia Robin McNamara. <laughs> Owen Thomas Metz. Emma Ann Murphy. Henry Stephen Murphy. Audra Danielle Nail.
Nicholas Trent Osborne. Enzio Paolo Panzera. Taylor Elise Pierce. Cassidy Nicole Ritchie. Lydia Viola Robertson. Ashley Allison Rosinski. Emily Catherine Rudder. Nicholas Taylor Sarcino. Shaman A. Schofield. <laughs> Sela Camille Simmons. <laughs> Layla Jane Dush Slaughter. Signe Elizabeth Dash Slaughter. Allison Patricia Smith. Catherine Elizabeth Stanley. Catherine Faye Stevens. Ella Bush Stevens. Roman Joseph Strieski. Merit Aileen Swanson. <laughs> Samantha Elizabeth Swartz. Matthew Allen Taylor. Tia Lynn Thomas. Patrick John Alvin Tingler. Caroline Jane Varney. Alexander Kuzam Wally. <laughs> Seth Michael Walters. Katana Makaya Ward.
Veronica Hope Warren. Cora Marie Wilson. John Austin Wilson. Eric Daniel Yeager. Hannah Jane Yoakum. Jacob Lee Mesher Zimmerman. Thank you. Graduates, you can now move your tassels from the right side of your graduation cap to the left side. And now, please feel free to sing along at home or in the, in the crowd as we play our Grandview Heights alma mater. And now, I'd like everyone in attendance and everyone watching at home, please join me in honoring for the very first time the graduated class of 2021 by giving them a standing ovation and applause as they celebrate and exit the stadium.